Now for our story. Aunt Mary Lane's pretty young niece, Peggy Douglas, stood just inside the entrance to the drugstore in Wakefield, looking absently at the rack on which the magazines were displayed. It was 3.30 in the afternoon, and Peggy was waiting for her friend Jane Plummer, who now taught kindergarten at the same school which she and Peggy had attended when they were youngsters. It was a bright, crisp day, and Peggy, wearing a becoming new dress, should have added the final touch to a happy scene. But Peggy was far from happy. Recently, she'd been depressed. She'd had an uneasy, worried feeling most of the time. When she tried to tell herself she had no reason to be depressed, that the future she and Nicholas Dorn were planning together promised everything she wanted in life, somehow she, she couldn't convince herself. She couldn't fight off the secret despondency which had oppressed her ever since she'd heard of Kip Mead's return to Wakefield from California. But now, as her friend Jane comes up to her, Peggy attempts to muster a smile. Hello, Jane. Hi, Peggy. Been waiting long? I'm not very. Well, I'm sorry if I kept you standing here. One of my mamas, Mrs. Ingalls, wanted to talk to me about her fine son, Tommy. I just couldn't get rid of it. What's the matter with Tommy? Oh, nothing serious. His mother was worried because he's been making up stories. You know how kids do. Little fantasies about things that happen, or, or rather, things that haven't happened. She was afraid it meant he was turning into a, a prevaricator or something. Well, what do you tell him in a case like that? Well, just told us he ought to be glad her child has a healthy imagination and not to worry about it. It's a perfectly natural development. You're so smart, Jane. Who is I knew all about those things? Oh, well, I'm not smart, Peggy. Don't ever think it. I'm just an eager beaver, that's all. <laughs> well, I said you might as well start for home. Or oh, have you some shopping to do? Oh, no shopping, but... If you don't mind, Peggy, I, I have an appointment with Dr. Lewis. It, it won't take very long. Oh, I don't mind waiting, Jane. I have more time than anything else. Well. Jane, is something wrong? Aren't you feeling well? Oh, I never felt better in my life. Mother has the idea that I should have a routine checkup every so often. So she finally talked me into making this appointment. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, but it makes her happy and keeps peace in the family. <laughs> well, shall we get started? My car's parked just around the corner. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Nice outside. Why don't we walk over? It's just as easy. Okay. Let's. Well, what have you been doing all afternoon? Having fun while I was slaving away? Oh, nothing much. Came in with Aunt Mary. Had lunch with Nicholas. Nothing exciting. How is Nicholas, by the way? He's all right. But you needn't ask to be polite, Jane. I know you don't like him. Oh, that's not it, Peggy. I, I like Nicholas all right as a person. I just don't especially like him for you. That sounds familiar. As a matter of fact, I, I don't think you really like him for yourself. If you don't know better. That's ridiculous. I know what I want. Yes, I, I think you do, too. Only that's something else you won't admit to yourself. Honestly, Jane, I don't know what you're talking about. All this business about admitting and not admitting things to myself. I'm not a child, you know. No, Peggy, I'm not. You're a big girl now. Look, I'm going to tell you something. But I don't think you're going to like it. Well, go ahead. Not that I don't know what you're going to say. You might just as well save your breath. I'm not so sure you do it. I... Oh, yes, I do. You're going to tell me what a swell guy you think Bill is and how unreasonable I've been and so on and so forth. Peggy, you're prejudiced and you always have been. Peggy, it isn't so much what I think about Bill. It's you I'm concerned about. I don't want to have a disagreement with you, but I'm your friend and, and I feel I ought to talk to you straight from the shoulder. Of course you like him. I'd do the same with you. I'm sorry that we don't see things the same way about Bill. That's just it. I, I think we do. But I think you're hiding from yourself somehow. Peggy, I, I'm just as sure as I can be that you really are still in love with Bill Mead. But you've got this stubborn pride that won't let you give in. Even though everything that Bill did has been explained. You know he couldn't help acting the way he did. You know you misjudged him. But now you're ashamed of that guy. I'm not ashamed of anything. Well, no, 
maybe I, maybe I didn't use the right word. Peggy, the thing that worries me is... You might as well say it, Jim. Whatever it is. Think you've gone this far? Peggy, ever since I've known you, even when you were a little kid, you've always been so honest about things. Honest with yourself, too. But now I... I have a feeling you're sort of playing a game with yourself. Trying to talk yourself into something. I don't know. Maybe it's because you think you have some sort of obligation to Nicholas and, and you don't want to let him down. Well, I do have an obligation to Nicholas. He's a father. But if you'd only realize, I mean, have you any idea how rare it is for two people to feel toward each other as you and Bill did How precious it is. But that's all over, Jane. Bill married Kit. Yes. And he found out what a terrible mistake he made. He's done his penance, Peggy. He never should have married her in the first place. And so just out of her pride, you're going to plow straight ahead and ruin three lives. Yours and Bill's and... And Dawn's. Jane, that... You know very well that you love Bill and he loves you. Thank you, Peggy. I'm surprised, Peggy. I'm very disappointed. Oh, I wish you'd stop telling me how I feel. Everyone keeps pounding at me. I, I just wish people would let me alone. All right, Peggy. If you can look me straight in the eyes and, and tell me you're not in love with Bill Mead, I promise never to say another word about it. All right, Jane. You win. I am in love with Bill. Everything you said is true. I knew it, Peggy. Don't you see that I just couldn't stand it? But whether I am or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. It's, it's too late. But Peggy, I... Please, Jane, let's not talk about it anymore. I, I can't. Okay, Peggy. Okay. The girls were silent then until they arrived at the doctor's office and greeted Dr. Lewis, who had known them both since they were youngsters. Jane went in to have a checkup, and Peggy sat in the waiting room alone, rippling through the pages of the magazine, but actually seeing nothing but content. A few minutes later... Well, Peggy Douglas. Oh, this is quite a surprise. Hello, Kit. I heard you were back. Oh, so this is the baby. He looks very cute. Even asleep. Mm, he's an angel. Why don't you put him here on the couch while you're waiting? Oh, that's an idea. You always were a practical little thing, Peggy. There we are. Are you waiting to see Dr. Lewis, too? No. I'm just waiting for Jane Plummer. Jane Plummer? You remember Jane? Lives next door to us. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I hope she won't be too long. I don't think she will be. I'm glad I ran into you today, Peggy. I've been wanting to have a talk with you. Really? Yes. Well, for one thing, I wanted to congratulate you. I understand you're running around with some writer. Running around? Oh, you know what I mean. Stop that or permanent? It's hardly your business, is it, Kit? Oh, quite the contrary. I've always been quite interested in your love life, shall we say? I want to be sure you're not living on any false hope. False hope? Yes. Naturally, if you're happy about this new romance, I'll know that isn't the case. What are you driving at, Kit? Just this. There's been some rumor floating around town since I came back that Bill and I are splitting up. I think it's particularly important for you to know that it isn't true. Important for me? I don't see why you say that. No concern of mine, but you... Peggy, don't pull that routine on me. I know better. I know Bill's been out to the Lane Farm. He's told me all about it. And did he tell you that I wouldn't listen to him? The point is, I just want to let you know, to impress upon you even, that Bill and I are not going to break up. Regardless of what Bill or anyone else has told you. Uh, Peggy, you... You look a little pale. Peggy's face was white with intense unhappiness. 
with despair which she was unable to hide. The scene with Kit coming so soon after the confession she'd made reluctantly to Jay just a short while before was almost more than Peggy could stand. As she listened to Kit's last words, Peggy recalled her admission to Jane that she did love Bill. If only she could take those words back. Or better, if only they weren't so true. <laughs> 